tell everyone what drawing you were thinking of? A spaceship, like it's a rocket ship. A rocket ship. Yeah. You were thinking of a rocket ship. Yeah. Kathy, I drew. <laughs> a rocket ship. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel and this week it's exciting. It's honestly really exciting. It's a mind reading trick we're learning. Uh, it's direct, it's really simple, it's really powerful and it'll fool magicians. It'll fool everyone. No, no one's gonna figure this out, no one. Now before we jump into this amazing tutorial, I have some really great news. As you guys know, about a month ago, I released one of my tricks, ABC, on the magic market and it sold out. Within a week, it sold out. And for a time being, it was the best selling magic trick in the world. And, and then it sold out. So it can't be best selling anymore. There's none to sell. But the great news is it is up for trick of the year. And it's only been out for a month, but it's up for trick of the year of 2021. And I need your help. So Penguin Magic, which is one of the biggest magic retailers in the world, hosts an annual award ceremony. And guys, every single vote counts. I love this community that we built together here and I am asking for your support. So if you're familiar with ABC, you know, you've seen me perform it or you have it yourself, you've learned it and you think it deserves it, do me a huge favor. I'm gonna leave the link in the description. It's obviously free to vote. It's gonna take you a minute, head over there and then come back and in the comments of this video, let me know that you did that. I wanna know who went and voted. Okay, now let's jump right into the trick that we're learning this week. It's a beautiful piece of mind reading. It's extremely deceptive. It fools everyone, including magicians. Now, before we look at the performance, I'm gonna say this. In the performance, you're gonna see me using these double blank cards, but don't be discouraged if you don't have double blank cards. It doesn't matter because in the explanation, we're gonna talk about all kinds of things you can use instead of that, things that you have around the house as well. So let's jump right into the performance. Here it is. As a mentalist, I often ask people to make simple drawings of common objects. And I found that there are 45 objects that I get extremely often. And I've drawn them all for you guys over here and I wanna show you what these are. Uh, rose is very common, I get that a lot. Apple is very common. Birds are all kinds of animals. Houses, you would've probably guessed that one was up there, yeah. Peace sign, canoe. No, no. <laughs> you'd be, no, you'd be surprised. It's crazy how often you're laughing, but it's crazy how often people draw canoes. I see a lot, but a lot of different sporting goods, but you could see these are all different. And I'm gonna give these a mix and as I mix them, you can see all these different things going by. There's a little piggy hockey stick, you can see that. And uh, I'm gonna give it a cut. And oh, by the way, every uh, drawing comes up only once. There isn't a single one that comes up twice in this entire packet. Kathy, in a moment, I'm gonna run down my thumb like this. You're gonna say stop. I just wanna choose like a small packet of these. So whenever you like. Stop. Right there? Yeah. Wonderful, I'm gonna cut right where you said stop and I'm gonna put it right there. And uh, Kathy, grab those and take these, oh, the whole thing and mix them up like this. That way nobody can know the order. No, don't look, I mean, it doesn't matter. Okay. Totally up to you. But just make sure they're mixed up. That way I can't know the order of anything or where anything is. Let me know when you're happy that they're mixed. I'm happy. Okay. Now, Kathy, hold them up and one by one, go through them until you find something that you connect with. Maybe because it has meaning to you, maybe because you just like the image of it. Just get one that you like. Let me know when you see one that you're happy with. Okay, I'm happy. You've got one that, that's good? Yeah. Okay, don't give me any clues. Don't say a word out okay. loud. Just focus on that image, get like a, like a snapshot of it in your mind and then put it down here. Just the one you, you like, the one you're thinking of. Okay. That's the one? Yeah. Okay, put the rest of them on top. Great. So now, I mean, I, I can't know how many you had. I can't know which one you chose. There's no way. But just to be 100% safe, I'm going to give these a mix like that. That good? Okay. Now, uh, you, you shuffle like that as well. You can shuffle that way. Yeah, okay, go ahead, Isabel. Give that a shuffle. <laughs> mix them all up. No worries. <laughs> Oh, one, oh, one, one took off, no problem. Throw that on top, there we go. <laughs> Wonderful, that was good. That was I like a magical. it wasn't mine. It wasn't yours, no. okay, excellent. That's great, that's great. Um, wonderful, so all mixed up, you mixed, I mixed, there's no way I can know anything. I messed up. <laughs> no, that was, that was wonderful. Uh, best way to mix is to drop the cards. Now, Kathy, focus on what this drawing was. Focus on any, if it, you know, if it has a sound, how it would feel if you were to hold it. As much detail as you can, focus on this thing. Now. It's interesting, when I turned this over, I saw the ice cream. Um, there's a lot of food items in here. Kathy, right off the bat, and I'm gonna tell you why, earlier we were talking about dieting and things like this, and I feel like right now, you're not in a place where you chose something that no. you eat. 
No. You didn't choose a food item. No. Okay. <laughs> um, now, now you might be thinking to yourselves, wait a second, how many food items are there really? There's actually a lot. It could have been ice cream, candy is a food item, banana is a food item, shoes, you know, some people eat, I'm kidding, not sure. <laughs> but there's a lot of things in here, like pie, carrot, you guys could see there's a lot of different things in here that somebody would eat, but uh, pizza. pizza, well, but you didn't pick any of those. Tell us something else. Okay. Focus on what this is. I want you to focus on how big it is. For example, if it's small, imagine holding it in your hands. If it's a little bit bigger, imagine on the table. And if it's really gigantic, picture it like behind you. Are you picturing? Are you thinking about it? Okay, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but as, as she was focusing on it, there was a slight shift where her left shoulder turned back a little bit, almost as if to help her visualize, because it's not here, it's not here. I think this is a big thing. Is it? Mm -hmm. It's gigantic. <laughs> um, to the point where like it wouldn't even be in this house. So it would have to be outside, which is why I think you had this little bit of a turn to help you imagine it out there. Because this would normally be outside, right? It belongs outside. It actually belongs not even, this is crazy. This is crazy, because what I'm getting right now, what I'm getting right now, and you're gonna help me understand this, is it belongs outside, but like it wouldn't even be here on the ground. It's almost like when you're thinking about this, you're thinking up. That's the feeling I'm getting. Does that make sense? Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with this. I don't know 100% why. Honestly, I would have even forgotten that this was in there. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm shaking. This is what I'm going to go with. 45 different drawings in here. You could have thought of absolutely anything. There's no way I could have known which one you were going to choose. They are all different. I wrote what I'm feeling over here. For the first time in a loud, clear voice, tell everyone what drawing you were thinking of. A spaceship. Like a, a rocket ship. A rocket ship. Yeah. You were thinking of a rocket ship. Yeah, like... Kathy, I drew... <laughs> a rocket ship. Because I, I did this? I didn't even see it. Where I don't know. Is it? I don't know. There it was. I hope you enjoyed that performance. As you could see, it's a very impactful mind reading trick. And let's talk a little bit about the history. There isn't that much to say. So. Some of you, some of you are going to recognize the procedure here a little bit. A couple of months ago, I did a tutorial on the channel. It did really well. You guys had amazing things to say about it. Uh, and I actually performed it for Ekaterina virtually. And it was a complete fool. It's a card trick. It's done with a regular deck of cards. And you extremely fairly know the card that somebody chose and sort of read their mind to figure it out. I'll leave a link in the description to that one if you haven't seen it, but it used a principle called the interlocking chain, which I credited and I give all the history in that video. Once again, you could go check it out in the description. But as I looked at that principle, I was like, there's gotta be a way to adapt this to mind reading, not just card magic, and make it really, really good. And maybe even get a couple of extra hits in there. And so I did, I adapted it to the trick we're learning today. It's one of my favorites, and we're gonna jump into the explanation right now. So let's start with what you need in order to perform this. So the first thing you need is whatever you're going to make the drawings on. So I like to use double blank cards. These are basically playing cards that haven't been printed on, so they're a nice quality, nice thickness, they handle really well, and they last pretty much a lifetime. I highly recommend these, and there are really top quality ones available, and then some that aren't as great in quality, but still pretty good, but very affordable, and I will leave a link in the description to both those options. But you don't have to use double blank cards. You can use a stack of business cards, you know, whether it's your own or you know someone who has a bunch of business cards they don't need, just grab those. You can use blank business cards. Most stationery stores sell those, super affordable. You can use those, or you can use an old deck of cards and actually draw these things on the playing cards themselves, which isn't my preferred way to do this, but it works just the same. So on these blank cards, you're gonna make some drawings and we're gonna come back to that soon and I'll tell you exactly what it is you're drawing. But besides that, you're going to need a pen, which could be borrowed, and you're going to need some paper or a pad of paper, which also can be borrowed. So I'll go through these really quick so you guys could see them and then you could slow down the video if you want more detail, but there's two parts to these cards and part of the secret is that. And the two parts is this. One section is non-electronics. So we have sporting goods, foods, animals, all kinds of stuff, which you're gonna see. And then the other part is electronics or things that run on electricity. So I'll go through these right now. So we have 
apple, tree, cat, smiley face, bird, carrot, hammer, banana, pencil, and fire, dice. And you, there's about, I would say more or less of the non-electronic things. I would say about like, I don't know, 30 of them, but you could do any number you want. It's, it, there should be quite a bit more of non-electronics, but you know, you want to do less, you want to do more, totally up to you. Ice cream, music note, pizza, flower, peace sign, money, candle, book, coffee mug, ring, candy, pie, watermelon, glasses, canoe, drum, shoe, hockey stick, football, piggy, doggy, boat. And this is important. The sun is important. There's a meaning for this sun. Um, and we'll get back to that later. But right now, just notice how this one really reaches the edges of the drawing. We see these orange lines get almost to the edge. Very important. I'll leave that here for now. After that, everything that's left in this pile is either electronic or has an electronic component. The reason I have a few things in here that aren't obviously electronic is because I don't want my spectator to look at them and be like, wait a second, these are all electronics. So not everything here is in itself an electronic, but they all have an electronic component. For example, a microphone, a rocket ship, which definitely has electronic components. A light bulb is electricity. A guitar, so this guitar is not electronic, but there is such thing as an electric guitar. House, now nobody thinks of a house as an electronic, but there's tons of electronics in there. Camera, swimming pool. Once again, nobody thinks of that as an electronic, but you need electricity to run a swimming pool, the filtering system and everything. Computer, car, has electronics in it. Traffic light, watch, which runs on batteries most of the time, and television. So these are my electronics. These go here, the sun goes on top, and then everything else that's here on top of that. Now you're ready to begin. So to know what to say, just go back to the presentation, but basically you're saying, as a mentalist, I often ask people to make drawings, and these are the things that come up very often. And I like to go through these and, you know, like get their opinion, like dog, obviously, and they go, oh yeah, dog, and you go, yeah, pigs, you get a lot of pig football, you know, a lot of, and they go, yeah. And then there's some odd ones in there that canoe, and they're like, you saw in the performance, like, no, wait, what, canoe, why? And all these different things, so you get a reaction there. Now what you're doing is, as you're going through this, you're looking for the sun, and notice how easy it is to see it there because those lines go all the way to the edge. Here's what's cool about this. You don't have to remember orientation because even on the other side, you could see the sun right there. It's very easy to see it. So as you're going through and you're showing these, you're kind of randomly like pushing up and down, making it look sloppy. And when you get to the sun, you can comment on it, a sun, probably the most common one, and you're gonna leave it sticking out like this. So it's just sticking out a little bit backwards. And because you've been kind of chaotic about this, it's not noticeable. Now you're gonna close the pack up like this. You're gonna turn the whole thing over and notice how that's the sun right there, it's sticking out. My thumb is gonna come push down on that. As I close the deck, because I'm pushing down, my thumb can keep an opening right there. So above that opening is all the electronics here. And beneath that immediately is the sun followed by all the other stuff. And you, you obviously don't want them to see that, you're just holding the brake like this. Now you're gonna transfer, after you get that and you lift, you're gonna drop it onto your pinky and you're gonna get the famous pinky brake, which is just a bit of an opening like this with the pinky. They can't see that from the front. So we've now isolated the electronics. Now you're gonna use a riffle force, but not to force a card, but to force a packet. And the way to do that is you say, as I run down the cards like this, say stop when you like. Uh, we're just gonna grab a couple of cards and you start like this, very small. Now, if they wait a while, say, no, you know what? I don't want too many cards. So try to say stop a little quicker. Now we go here, we riffle through, they say stop. And you bring your index in like this to make it seem like you're opening it up where they said stop, but your thumb is picking up at the back over here. And that looks like this, you go in there, but in secret, you open up with the thumb back here and you give them these cards. You put the rest here. So you give them the electronic cards and you say, okay, grab those cards and just so everything's random, give it a mix. 
Now I'm gonna give a mix, but all I'm doing is I'm mixing the bottom cards. I don't wanna move the sun from the top. So I'm mixing up like this and I'm saying, do the same with your packets, but don't look at any of them because I don't want you to see any of them yet. So they're doing that. They're mixing these guys over here like this, however they want, doesn't matter. Now you're gonna tell them, go through the cards and find one that you connect with, find one that you like. So they're gonna go through and they're going to choose one. So I'm just gonna randomly choose one now. Let's say they go for that one. And I'll show you guys what it is, but obviously you wouldn't see this in your life, it's the car. So I say, okay, look at that, really build an image of this in your mind, and now set it down over here. So they're putting the car on top of the sun. Then you say, put all the rest on top like this. And they do. So in their heads right now, you don't know how many cards they had. You don't know what was in there. They picked one, they put it down, they dropped the rest on top. But it's about to get enormously more fair than that. This is the part that's going to fool everyone. Because right now, you can riffle shuffle this deck twice. And because of the interlocking chain principle, which is such a brilliant and deceptive principle, what that means is those two riffle shuffles cannot change the order of the electronics. It can put other cards between them, but it cannot change the order. Because look what happens as you shuffle. And again, in that other video, you guys can go back. I explained this principle in great detail. But as you shuffle once like this, you know, you can do the first one or they can do it. doesn't matter. They're putting cards in between those electronics, but there's no way to reorder those. And now all the electronics are in the top half. So if they do another riffle shuffle, once again, all they're doing is putting cards in the middle, but it's practically impossible to place another electronic between the sun and the car. So what that means is, even if there were two riffle shuffles, as you go through these cards, the electronic that's going to be after the sun, the first electronic you see, right? it doesn't matter how many cards are between them, that's the one they chose. So in this case, as I go through, and again, remember you can see that sun instantly. I see it right there. This is why I did this. I see those rays and I can slow down there and check it out. The next electronic is gonna be the car. In this case, it was only separated by one card. It might be two, it might be three, but I'm not gonna do this right away. After the two riffle shuffles, I'm gonna set this down here and I love this part. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at them and I'm gonna say, I'm, you know, it's funny, I'm not connecting with something that you eat. I don't think you eat this. And they go, no. So right away you have a hit because you know it's an electronic. There's nothing in that pile that's edible. So when you say that immediately, it's like you haven't even looked at anything and you're already connecting with this. Do not underplay that moment. It's really powerful. Now, as an excuse to go through these, I'm gonna say, well, hold on. You might think there aren't that many things you can eat, but there are, there are quite a few. And now this is my excuse to go find what the thing is. So as I spread through, I'm just looking for things you can eat. And I'm going, look, okay, well, you can't eat coffee, but you know, you can certainly drink it. Uh, and we have an apple, you can eat that. And now I see the sun and I keep going and I see the car. So I remember that that's what it is, but I just keep going casually. And I say, uh, let's see your banana. You can eat candy. You can eat, uh, what else? Carrot pie. There's so many things in here that are watermelon, so many different things. And by the way, I've purposely put a lot of things in there that you can eat. Cause I want to be like, look, there's all these different things. I want to take a quick break from the um, slight explanation here to give you a quick explanation about the presentation for me. When I do mentalism and I'm trying to connect with a thought, I really actually try to connect with that thought and not just tell them, here's what you're thinking, but connect with that process and how they're thinking of it and how I'm getting this information. One of my favorite things to do when it comes to objects, you saw me do it in the performance, is to have to tell them, Think of it, and if it's small, imagine it in your hand, and if it's a little bigger, imagine it on the table, and if it's really big, imagine it behind you. Now, I really don't like mentalists who make up things about body language, like, oh, you blinked twice, that means you're thinking of the color green. I hate that stuff. But what I said in that presentation, and what I say when I do this, is absolutely true. Things that we're interested in, or that we're connected to, pull our attention, and we tend to turn our body and our feet towards that thing. But if it doesn't happen, it's not that big a deal. Like in her case, it, she didn't really turn her attention outside, but I said she did. And I said, you know, we're, we're connected to our thoughts and that indicates that this is quite big and they reacted. The point is this, they can now go tell people, I know this mentalist who said that when we think of something, we direct our attention, our body turns that way. And that actually is true. So 
I'm not spreading lies. This is real facts. And I love that. I love putting real body language tips and tricks like that in the mentalism. So now that you've done the mind reading stuff and the little games to make it seem like you're in their head, you're going to grab the piece of paper, you're going to grab the pen, and you are going to draw whatever it was that they drew. In this case, it's the cart. And you're going to hold it up so they can't see it. And I, so there's a couple of ways. You have a couple of options here. I ask, what did you choose? They say car. Now, every now and then I go through and I find it. And I go, okay, where is it? Car, 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 car. And I find it and I show it to everyone. But more often than not, I don't even bother with that. I say, okay, it was a car. I might even ask them to describe it. You know, like, was, it, you know, was it boxy, whatever it was. And I slowly reveal that. And guys, there's absolutely no, they're going to go through this. There's no way they could put this together. All the evidence is gone. It, it, it's game over. There it was, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'm so excited for you because I know you guys are going to crush it with this one. And I almost feel bad for your audiences because you're just going to destroy their brains with this one. Please don't forget to vote for the Penguin Magic Awards. The link is in the description. Head over there, cast your votes, and then do come back and let me know in the comments after you voted. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you on the next one.